Hey guys, this is Dan Seifert from MobileBurn.com, and right now I've got in my hands the Motorola Photon 4G. This is the first high-end Motorola device that we've seen for Sprint in a long time, uh, and it's also Motorola's first 4G device for Sprint. So let's take a look and see what we got. The box here is this kind of unique, long, rectangular box, uh, a little bit different than what we've seen before. Slide it open there, pop open the cover, and there she is. That's the Motorola Photon 4G right there. So let's pop it out. And we'll get this powered up. There we go. Taking a look at the rest of the contents while that powers up. Isn't too much in here. We've got your basic USB cable, micro USB cable on one end, and your standard USB plug on the other. This will act as your charging and syncing cable to a computer, and it also plugs into the wall outlet here, uh, the brick here that goes into your wall outlet. And then you've got your getting started guide, uh, manuals, instructions, a couple different languages there. Uh, but that's it. Not too much as far as accessories go for the uh, Photon 4G from Sprint or Motorola. Taking a look at the hardware of the phone itself. Uh, as you can see, it's got a very large screen on the front here. It's a 4.3 inch screen. It's QHD, so it's 540 by 960 pixels of resolution. Uh, similar to the other QHD screens that we've seen from Motorola, recent Motorola devices like uh, the, um, the Droid X2 for uh, Verizon. Below that screen there, you've got four capacitive buttons for menu, home, back, and search. Up above that, we've got some fun things up here. You've got a notification light, as you can see, that's blinking there. Next to that is uh, the front-facing camera. This is a VGA camera, um, and it's highlighted in a little uh, silver circle there. Then you've got your earpiece, and you've got uh, some light sensors there. Otherwise, not too much else on the front. As you can see, it's kind of got this unique design, though. These uh, ridges along the sides here, it's almost like a, a beveled or uh, emerald cut as far as the uh, front face goes instead of your traditional squared off or uh, just straight up rounded edges. Looking at the side profile, the uh, Photon 4G is fairly thick as you can see. It's about 12.2 uh, 12, um, 12 millimeters thick, so it's definitely not the thinnest phone on the market, but it does have these nice rounded edges, so it certainly uh, feels pretty nice in your hand as well. This particular ha uh, side houses the micro USB port and the HDMI out port. So you can plug this into uh, an HDTV through the micro HDMI cable, or also Motorola sells an HD dock that you can sit this in that will output to a large TV. And then you don't have too much else, but you do have this uh, kind of glossy plastic here. The bottom of the phone, you don't really have much going on there. Pretty straightforward. The other side, we've got your camera button, which is uh, unfortunately a single detent. It means that if you push it down, it will take the picture. There's no half press for autofocus. Um, it will autofocus before it takes the picture, but you can't stop it from taking the picture once you've already pushed the button. Then over here we've got the volume rocker here, which kind of has these ridged uh, finish on it. Up top, there's your um, power lock sleep key, and then your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Taking a look at the back of the Photon 4G, you can see you've got this uh, rubberized back cover here. Uh, gives you a nice little grip to it and a nice feel in your hand. Over here is the kickstand, which uh, owners of the original Evo 4G should be happy to see since it doesn't come on the Evo 3D. So uh, the kickstand is there on uh, the Photon 4G. So it's pretty solid as well as you can see it uh, clicks into place and, and is uh, pretty strong and sturdy. So it shouldn't have any trouble supporting the phone. Over on the right hand side, You've got your 8 megapixel camera um, with dual LED flash and autofocus. It records HD video, but it records in 720p. It does not do 1080p HD video. Um, and it does not autofocus in video either. Then you've got a couple of microphone inputs that you can see here. Uh, these holes right there on the back of the cover. And then your uh, um, screened on Sprint logo and Motorola logo in the middle. Now if we pop open the back cover here, let's see if I can get this open. There we go. You've got uh, your battery here, which is a 1700 milliamp hour unit, and Sprint and Motorola say you should get about 10 hours of talk time or 8.3 days of standby on it. Then up here you've got your SIM card because yes, while this is also a uh, WiMAX 4G phone and a CDMA phone, it also has a GSM radio in it, 
uh, because it is uh, the first global WiMAX phone from Sprint. So you got your SIM card in there for your global roaming needs. And then you've got an empty micro SD card slot. Uh, Motorola and Sprint aren't providing any micro SD card with the Photon 4G, but it does have 16 gigabytes of built-in storage. So you shouldn't need that too often, um, but if you do run out of your 16 gigabytes, you can upgrade all the way on up to a 32 gigabyte card if you desire. So there you have it. That's a quick tour of the hardware of the Photon 4G. Pretty well put together, though it is very glossy, and as you can see, my fingerprints are kind of getting all over the place with it. So if uh, fingerprints bother you, uh, it's definitely going to present a little bit of an issue for you. Uh, it feels pretty nice in the hands, about 158 grams, so it's right in the middle as far as uh, the featherweight light guys or the heavier models on the market. Um, so it's not, not the lightest phone, but it's not the heaviest phone either. Um, the screen's pretty nice though, nice big 4.3 inch screen. Uh, QHD resolution as well, like I mentioned earlier. Taking a look at the software on the uh, Photon 4G, what we've got here is Android 2.3.4 Gingerbread with uh, Sprint. I mean, excuse me, Motorola's uh, custom interface on it. They're not calling it Moto Blur anymore, but it does uh, carry many of the same elements that its older uh, Moto Blur uh, interface had, but it has been updated. This is a very similar interface to what we saw on the Droid X2 and other recent Motorola phones and uh, we do like a lot of things with it. It does tend to work very well and offers some really cool unique features. For starters you've got seven home screens to page through that you can customize with various widgets and shortcuts. It doesn't support the pinch to zoom out function that you'll see on like uh, HTC devices or uh, Samsung devices but uh, it is fast enough as far as paging through and down at the bottom you can see we've got a little uh, dot indicator to indicate what page that we're on. Along the bottom you've got uh, four shortcut buttons that stay put no matter where you go and that is uh, for phone right there you've got your web browser um, Sprint's put its Sprint ID shortcut there so this is uh, also equipped with Sprint's customizable ID system and then this button here opens up your whole lamp, uh, app tray. You can customize all of these except for the app tray button. Uh, you can't change that out, but you can change out the Sprint ID, for instance, if you wanted to put a different, uh, more useful application there. Something that I really like in the Motorola interface is the notification bar. And so you can see here, we've got two notifications. And normally with most Android phones, you can clear it, uh, and it'll clear all of them. But what Motorola uh, has done here is giving you the option to uh, selectively clear a notification. So you can clear more one at a time and, and continue to keep notifications there if it's useful for you to remember uh, things like that. Pretty cool feature. Taking a look at the dialer here, we've got Motorola's custom skin dialer here and it will has T9 searching so you can start uh, dialing and it will match people up based on name or number. The contacts here allows you to scroll um, to integrate your contacts with your Facebook account uh, so you can see your contacts, pictures, and names there right uh, in your uh, contact list there. As you can see, scrolling is very smooth and effortless. And you've also got uh, shortcut letters here, so you can jump to a specific letter quickly and easily. Now the Photon 4G is powered by an NVIDIA Tegra 2 dual-core processor. So it's very fast. It's clocked at 1 gigahertz. We haven't seen really any issues as far as speed goes with this. It's very quick um, and very fast to... Uh, page through things, opening um, app trays and stuff, it's very fast, really no lag whatsoever that we've noticed. Apps tend to open very quickly as well once you uh, hit the button and open it up. If we take a look at the text messaging app here, Motorola has uh, pretty much skinned the basic text messaging app from Android. It isn't too much different. It's got a different color scheme here, but it is pretty spartan, pretty basic, but it does work rather well. If we hit the text entry box, we can see the on-screen keyboard that's provided. Uh, it's got Motorola's multi-touch keyboard, which is one of our favorites of the Android platform. Works very, very well. Um, it's very fast and accurate and, and easy to use. And if you turn the photon on its side, you can get a larger layout as well. Sprint's also included the swipe keyboard. So if you do prefer that, you can use the swipe keyboard. It's not the latest version of swipe, um, but it is there and it does work just like swipe normally does. Taking a look at the applications that are installed on the Photon 4G out of the box, Sprint has put a number of them uh, by default in. There's a, uh, a few Sprint applications. You can see Mobile Hotspot, NASCAR, um, Sprint ID there, Sprint Mobile Wallet, Sprint Music Plus, 
Sprint Radio, Sprint TV, Sprint Worldwide, um, Telenet, GPS. There's quite a few here um, pre-installed out of the box, but like we saw on the Evo 3D, Sprint's giving you the ability to remove the ones that you don't want, save for the Sprint ID pack. So you can remove the NASCAR application if you don't want it. Uh, you can remove the mobile wallet if you don't want it, which is pretty cool. Uh, the Photon 4G has about 3 gigabytes of uh, storage dedicated to applications, so there's not a good chance that you won't run out of space on it, but if you do find that you, the uh, built-in applications are just bothering you or whatever, you can remove them, which is very cool. There's uh, the WebTop connector app that you can see there, as this is compatible with the WebTop interface from Motorola when you plug it into the HD dock, that's an optional accessory, and that will uh, allow you to uh, browse the web and stuff with Motorola's WebTop interface there. Taking a look at the browser here, let me open that up. Uh, we've got a slightly modified version of the Android browser. Uh, it gives you standard uh, browsing uh, features. You can open up multiple windows at the same time. So if we go to our windows, we can add another one there and that will allow us to view multiple web pages at the same time. If we load up. Mobile Burns website here. Uh, now there, by default, goes goes to our uh, mobile formatted website, and we can load up the full web page here. Now the browser, as you can see, is very fast to load things. We are connected to a pretty solid uh, Wi-Fi connection here. Um, in this area, we don't have Sprint uh, 4G service, and Sprint's 3G service is a bit slow. So, right now we're connected to Wi-Fi, but the uh, browser itself loaded very quickly as you can see scrolling is effortless you can double tap to zoom and you can pinch to zoom as well which works very well if you turn it on its side it will work in landscape as well and you can see we've got some flash support and it plays embedded videos just fine. Hey guys, this is Dan Seifer from MobileBurn.com and right now I'm taking a quick look at the motor. So there you go. And then we can switch back to our original web page by going to our windows and selecting the original web page there. It's not quite as fancy as the browser that we see on devices like uh, HTC devices where you can pinch all the way out to sw switch between windows and stuff, but it certainly is very effective and uh, works well enough for most needs.